Hello and welcome back. Today I'm talking about the movie Senior Year. Now this movie takes two concepts that we've seen many times before. One, the going back to high school movie and two, the waking up from a coma movie. Slams them both together but never quite reaches the comedic or even emotional potential of both. So the question really is, should you watch this movie or not? I say yes, but hear me out. Only when you have binged everything out there and you're looking for something new to watch or you want something in the background while you're doing your chores. And that's not really a good thing. But let me begin. So Senior Year, currently out now on Netflix, tells the story of Stephanie, an egocentric and self-centered 17-year-old obsessed with winning prom queen because she believes that will give her uh, the best life she could live. Uh, in, 20, uh, in 2002, she has a cheerleading accident that leaves her in a coma and then she wakes up 20 years later for some reason wanting to go back to high school and again, trying to go for that prom queen crown. So, let's start with, if you are like me, then you are always on the lookout for the next big teen movie phenomenon that becomes the high school movie that captures and defines a generation or a decade. Many movies in the past have done it. For example, in the 80s, we all know those famous John Hughes movies, especially Breakfast Club and Sixteen Candles and also uh, Fast Times at Richmond High. Those three movies, like, they defined the 80s. You watch them and you are watching the 80s in high school. Uh, in the 90s, I would say it was Clueless. There were more teen movies in the 90s, but Clueless, who this movie gives a shout out to, um, was the 90s movie. And I would say in the 2000s, and the one that has lasted, I think, the longest, is Mean Girls. Everybody knows Mean Girls. Everybody can quote Mean Girls. It is the movie that has really given it its stamp on pop culture. And nothing really has come close since. Maybe Booksmart, which I honestly love that movie. If you do, or if you haven't seen it, go watch it. Booksmart is a great movie. Captures the era very well. But I don't think that movie has really, like put its foot down in the generation and in the decade that it came out of. So unfortunately, Senior Year is not that movie that really encapsulates what 2022 is. And the reason being is that it is not a movie for high schoolers, believe it or not, even though it's a movie about being in high school. This is more a movie for my generation, for people that graduated high school when she went into the coma in 2002, 2003, early 2000s, or late 90s. That is the demographic that will like this movie and will enjoy it, or at least will somewhat enjoy it. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe high school kids will enjoy this movie. Maybe they'll understand all the 90s and 2000 references. But I really doubt that anybody who was born in 2000 and on were up on their feet with a big smile and dancing when Be Witch C'est La Vie came on as the closing song. I mean, you know that if you're from my generation, you were just say you say you won't that song was humongous back then for some reason the silliest song ever but everybody knew it and it's a it's a song that you probably heard in a long time so that made the ending a lot better for me it's almost as if i forgave that the movie wasn't as great but i was like on my feet just dancing for that song uh i just gave you a treat by the way i never sing so please don't make fun of me for that so going back to the movie and what i thought about it um Number one, I think the problem was the script. I don't think it was a very good script at all. They had a lot of pop references for the 90s and the 2000s and the music that they used. And that's all good, but that's almost like just sugarcoating something so that it looks great and pretty and delicious. But unfortunately, it wasn't witty. It wasn't clever. 
that's where most of the of the humor and comedy should be coming from from the cleverness and wittiness of a line or of a joke and all of them fell kind of flat it was just they were they were just giving a lot of references and that doesn't do anything at least for me except maybe make me feel really old like oh wow i didn't graduate five years ago it's actually been 20 years since i graduated so if anything this movie made me feel old uh, also, the characters are not very likable, and they don't do a good job in making Stephanie, specifically, be likable. She's egocentric and self-centered, and even though at the end they make an effort to show, oh look, she changed, they, they didn't really succeed at doing that. The movie really failed to, to give us an emotional side of the story. This is the person that lost 20 years of experience of her life. There should have been more emotion. And unfortunately, that wasn't there. There were two scenes. It's, it's, well, I would say there was one scene that really got to me that I wish the movie had more of that. And that was when her best friend Martha, who is now the principal of the high school, lets her know how difficult high school was for her because she's gay and Stephanie didn't have no idea so for me that was very emotional and powerful number one because I lived through that I high school for me was a nightmare because I was gay and I went to an old boy school and I was in the closet and I was constantly terrified that if anybody found out I would be shredded to pieces so that moment it was so relatable i completely got it and it was very sweet and i feel like the movie needed more emotional moments balanced out with great humor and it would have been a whole lot better so this is again a girl that missed 20 years of her life and they didn't really do uh, uh, enough to show her relationship with her mom which she does later on opens up about why she is the way that she is because she wants to make her mom proud and that was beautiful in itself but it just wasn't enough once again now what the message of the movie does end up being in the end which i think it's something that we all struggle to do or we all do and struggle to realize that we do is that we usually push away the people that we love have you ever heard uh the saying that we are harder on the people closest to us or we usually fight with the people close to us more than other people well this movie much that's the message do not push away those that love you when people that love you give you a compliment accept it because those are the ones that matter not the other people not your peers not people you barely know not your followers on social media the people that matter the most are your close friends your close uh, family members and the people that genuinely care for you and love you and i thought that was a great message it's just it took a lot of nothing to get to that and really what saves the movie is rebel wilson whether you love her or hate her she has such a charismatic uh screen presence you can get your eyes off of her she is really funny and she always does a great job even though this might not be her best work i i still followed the movie all through the end because i wanted to keep watching her to see what would she would do next um so I think she kind of saved the movie and made it just a teeny bit better than what it would have been with somebody that wasn't her. Um, also, I thought it was very weird the way they showed current high schools in 2022. Like the wokeness of it, I don't really think it's like that. I think they overplayed it for the movie. And that for me was a little bit jarring because I was, I mean, again, I haven't been in high school since 20 years ago, but it's like, it cannot be like that. That's kind of ridiculous. But um, I do see how they were trying to show the contrast of when she was in high school to how it might be now. I'm curious to know if anybody's in high school right now, is it really like that? Please let me know, because to me that was a bit off. Going back to what I said that this movie is not really made for high schoolers now, but for people of my age that we can get the nostalgia factor of the early 2000s. Um, I feel like 
I I wish they would have featured more the high school kids that she becomes friends with because I thought it was a great cast. These kids did a great job, a phenomenal job actually, in their small roles. They were all present and they all delivered well and I wanted to see more of them. So I would love to actually see what these kids do, uh, do afterwards. But I feel like the movie missed a good portion of funny moments or great moments of high school had those kids given more were given more screen time and since they did not get more screen time that's why I say this is not a movie for high schoolers it's a movie for us the adults who want to like reminisce or want to have that nostalgia factor of the early 2000s so all in all senior year is a movie you should give a go you'll have fun you'll enjoy it it'll remind you of a lot of other movies like bring it on never being kissed freaky friday and a whole bunch of other movies that you've kind of seen before and it tries to to have its own take on it but it just kind of falls flat too many pop culture references from that era but nothing really clever or really witty in the writing to make it stand out but I'm really curious to know if you guys like the movie. What do you think of Rebel Wilson? I think she's always great despite the material not being great. Um, and I'm and what I really want to know the most is if the high school environment portrayal, if it is accurate. So if somebody out there knows, let me know because I'm dying to know if that's what high schools are like today, which I found a very weird high school. But again, I'm from a different generation. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate it. Please click like on the video, subscribe if you want, and for more videos, I will keep bringing more content to you guys. Again, I am Frank Javier, and I'm signing off. Bye-bye.